So I'm here to talk about Vulcan Egg. Who has heard about Vulcan Egg so far? Can you get some hands? Yes, Vulcan Egg. So that's me. So wallet connects, very simple. Open protocol for connecting dApps to wallets. Why did this exist? Let's find out. I'll go through it and let's see where it's heading next. My name is Pedro Gomes, uh, lead developer of Wallet Connect. I'm maintaining the open source project and you can find me on Twitter, Pedro UID. What is Wallet Connect? How does it even work? It's just a QR code. QR codes have existed for so long. It's an end-to-end -end encrypted communication protocol. That's like the best way to put it in one sentence. It's just providing communication between two devices. It's, it's the WhatsApp of wallets, basically. It's the signal of wallets. I'm just providing a messaging protocol between dApps that are on the desktop and mobile wallets. So the idea was to create a more secure WebG experience cross platform. So Alex talked about it, and it's pretty simple. Right now, we have private keys that hold funds. that you want to create like multiple accounts, so we would be, like copy and pasting between devices, and that's pretty secure. Like you're basically exposing your private key to all of like these scenarios where you're not even sure where you're copy and pasting. So with MetaMask, we have this Chrome extension that just lives on the browser, and even for like mobile wallets, there's that browsers that kind of just interact directly with the client. But if you want to use something else like your mobile phone, you always have your mobile phone with you. And the premise was that if we always have our mobile phone with us, we can just hold one private key for everything. So I kind of just need to recreate this communication between the two. Instead of creating a wallet, we just went with like a protocol. So the protocol would talk between a client and the wallet, and it would enable anyone to just follow an SDK and interact with any dApp that would support this protocol. And that's exactly what we did. And fortunately, I can now demonstrate the difference between MetaMask Mobile and MetaMask Extension. Since MetaMask Mobile now supports Wallet Connect, you can have the same connection that you used to have on a pop-up showing up on the Chrome extension, but it's just on your phone. And that's what happens when you scan the QR code. At that point, you'll be sharing the accounts and you'll be interacting in a two-way communication between the dev and the wallet. Where did it start? So the first prototype was at Balance. This was like back a year ago in March 2018. I remember presenting at DAPCON. It was pretty novel and it didn't have adoption at all. And then we got an EF grant and that's how I started working full time on it. And in, we released the alpha just a month later. And it was pretty bad, I got to say. Like, I mean, at the time, it was pretty exciting, but it wasn't good. And I found out the hard way, going through the adoption part. In August, we had the Wallet Connect Association. It was incorporated in Zoog. And then uh, the Tachyon supported us with an open source grant uh, back in September. And then we kind of kick off some adoption. These first adopters were really crucial. Uh, big thanks to Ligi from Wallet, the tokenary Zerion guys, and DDX, because we really battle tested the first version with them. And eventually we realized we need a new protocol. Like it was really bad. So a brand new version was fought out to have improved performance, preserve privacy, and just expanded the future set all around. Because we kind of had to break down wh what is a DAP going to need from a wallet? Because we just need to be flexible enough to support all wallets and all dApps. So it had to kind of be broad enough. So in January, I released a better release that was kind of just kicked off the whole adoption that we've had so far. And in the beginning of 2018, I published the beta with full JSON RPC support for Ethereum and then improved push notification architecture and it's a live two-way communication that was much better than the first uh, version. So at ECC, I presented the better version, and right after, we just had like Nosa Safe and Argent announce they're going to support Wall Connect in the future, and from there, we're just going to see a lot of adoption. Following up, we got Binance and Trust Wallet. So Binance Dex and Trust Wallet had communication using Wall Connect, so Trust Wallet users could just connect using Wall Connect on the Binance Dex. And then in May, in, uh, during Blockchain Week, MetaMask announced they were going to release a public beta with Wall Connect in July. So right now you can go to mobile.mask.io uh, and get your mobile wallet. And then we had Rainbow, Pillar, Matic, Bamboo Relay. 
We had Konami, Grid Plus, Locally Theorem, Treebox, and I haven't even named all of them because it, they just keep going. And last month we reached almost 4,000 downloads, so the, the growth is there and we're getting this protocol to really be a universal protocol because we really want it to be like the USB for wallets where we all share one infrastructure and we don't have to integrate multiple solutions for mobile wallets. So this is where we are now. We have SDKs with web, iOS, and Android, and a pretty solid community that has been really working on it, and it's getting better every day. And one of the projects that I was working on uh, used to be called Wallet Connect Widgets, but it kind of just didn't take off. So a new rebrand is always good. So just put like a library like this and rebrand to Web3 Connect. And basically what it is is that this is not just about Wallet Connect. This is kind of like what Alex was touching upon before, where we have multiple provider solutions and app developers have to integrate every single one of them. And they kind of just get stuck in the MetaMask one and they don't move into the next one. So this library is trying to just make that easy. With one button, they can just integrate this model and provide the user the option to choose whatever wallet they want without forcing them one single solution. And also we're working on state channels. We're really, really close. We're wor working with Connects to have like built-in support within the Wallet Connect. So once you integrate Wallet Connect, you will have a client for Connects that you can just use state channels immediately. Mobile to mobile. I thought this one would be released by now. I'm very disappointed, but this is actually really hard. So the idea with mobile to desktop was pretty cool, but what if we could use the mobile Safari browser to just interact with a dApp? So main, the main friction here is actually iOS. Android just worked straight away with the current protocol, but with iOS, there's a bit a few caveats that we have to consider in order to allow a smooth experience between the two. And standards, like there's nothing that I can do better at my job than just push for standards because I'm just a protocol that talking between dApps and wallets and I have to coordinate between all of these parties and the best way I can do it is creating EIPs. I created these, but this one is an old one that's a really good one, which is gonna kind of converge all of these providers to have like a unified uh, interface that's just gonna make our lives easier. And then there's a bunch of them like transaction chain ID. If you've seen me on Twitter, I've been pushing for chain ID a lot because that's the right way of doing things. We've been using network ID and it's just wrong. And I hope we kind of move away from it. And the wallet update, when you go to adapt and you basically are prompted to like, hey, switch to this network. With the EIP 2015, you can just make a request to the wallet and the wallet can switch it and you can even prompt the user if you want to make that request available or not. So what's coming for Wallet Connect V2? It's been a year, a lot of adoption, but there has been a lot of learnings and how we could do better. And in order to not have breaking changes, we have to kind of have like major versioning and everything and basically allow production apps to kind of continue with the V1 while we're producing the V2. One of the things is called Wallet Connect Instant. So there's a, a lot of use cases that I found that like even with a QR code and you only want to make one request, you still want that feedback. So basically having that two-way communication being very ephemeral. So instead of having to request to connect to a dApp and then to make a request and sign a message, what if we just batch a bunch of them that we know we have prior knowledge that are gonna be required and then close the session right after? The, the difficulty here is that we actually have to, some, to have some kind of like pre-filled fields, like for example, if you wanna know the address or what tokens the user wants to put in. So we're gonna create like a schema of how you can define without knowing those fields so that the wallet can just pre-fill them on user um, approval. Asymmetric key exchange, so there's a bit of like caveats with how we do the key exchange right now and we wanna really improve that with double ratchets exchange, uh, which is used in Signal and WhatsApp as well. Uh, and trustworthy agnostic, like it's gonna become even more and more agnostic. Like the protocol will be so unopinionated, it's just gonna become boring. But it will allow us to do some very interesting things. So right now we use a bridge, which is a WebSocket server that keeps connection between two, two parties, but we can actually just abstract that to become like a Bluetooth. And the idea is to kind of actually provide like a hierarchy where you try to go for the Bluetooth and then eventually you go to the WebRTC and as a last resort, the bridge will be the just a fallback for everything. But one good experience about Bluetooth is that this presentation is only here because of Bluetooth, because the internet was so bad, I couldn't even get it into the laptop. 
and account signing models. This is actually an interesting one. So the idea was that what if not all requests need to be relayed to a mobile wallet? Like the idea that the private key only lives in one side, this kind of like transcends a bit like from the state channels that they generate app keys on the, the browser and then even the universal login and meta transactions uh, framework which uses like delegate key signing. So we can create like these account modules that will have like custom rules of how to actually sign that can be synced between the two clients on the app and the wallet. So some requests might be required to go all the way to the wallet but some requests might have like less uh, conditions that can just be handled on the browser side instead. And the vision is to expand. Like we want to grow this protocol to encompass more and more and more. We really want to be like the universal protocol for everything private key manager related. And we want to expand first like with Bitcoin and Cosmos. We're working with IOV and commercial network and something that we're going to present at DEF CON, which is an interchain registry, which is trying to standardize the interface, what it is to be an application that connects with all Cosmos and Ethereum chains. And we're working on kind of becoming as, as in agnostic as possible that it, it will allow a very easy interface between the two. Also with Uport and Diff, so kind of the idea is that all accounts are, are just the IDs that can be authenticated by the wallets that can provide us the information. So technically, the Wallet Connect V2 not only is blockchain agnostic, but it's also more like as a DID authenticator. And that's one of the things that it's really exciting to see as it evolves further for other use cases. So I would love to contribute with all of you guys. If you not adopted Wallet Connect yet, reach out. I really want to help. Scan the QR code. That's where the website is. You can have all of these links, documentation, GitHub, Telegram, and really get involved because this is a community project. I'm just the glue between all of these parties like Trust Wallets, MetaMask, Gnosis Safe. They've all contributed immensely to this project. And basically, I'm just trying to coordinate between the community to kind of share a unified protocol. Thanks, everyone. So as this is super open source, um, I imagine it's a bit hard to uh, to monetize anything. Do you completely rely on funding for the vision and everything? Uh. Yeah, so like you said, like you saw, like I've had two grants so far, and I'm kind of just bootstrapping the project for now. But the idea is to kind of have the Wallet Connect Association take over and have all of the parties involved supporting this the project. Okay, thanks for the effort. Hey, uh, what is the roadmap for uh, Moji Chain support? The roadmap for multi-chain multi support. So the idea with multi-chain support is that what we're doing with the interchain registry is trying to kind of find the, like what are the minimum viable information that it will allow applications to kind of interact with nodes that are not the nodes you're expecting. So right now there's the assumption when Wallet Connect that this is an EVM compatible. EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine. So basically it will follow the standards that are like if send transaction, if sign message, there's always uh, this prior knowledge of what you're actually interacting with. But what if we, I could give you a DID that would resolve a document that would tell you how to interact with the application? Maybe you already know how to interact with the application, but for example, in this scenario of Cosmos, they have quite a lot of flexibility with the Cosmos SDK to kind of have like very broad uh, feature sets that are not originally supported with the Cosmos Hub, for example. So the idea is that you will have like this authentication where you disclose, I am this app and I have, I want these accounts and the wallet will then re resolve those accounts and you will be able to kind of just follow this schema to kind of understand how you're actually going to make signing requests with the wallet. Hi, uh, great project. Uh, thanks for uh, your work. Um, could you tell a little bit more um, what kind of use cases uh, you see for, um, for a Bluetooth, how, how that would work? So I think like for now, there's the, this big, like it's all about mobile to desktop. With mobile to mobile, um, it will kind of still rely a lot on the web sockets part because you're not gonna have a Bluetooth communication between two mobile apps. But at least for like between your computer, most computers will have Bluetooth. And if the Bluetooth is not present, then it will fall back to the web sockets and also the WebRTC, which is something we want to kind of prioritize than the web sockets because it's more decentralized. But I think like other devices, even if you have an iPad and you have a point of sale system, you're still more easily connected with Bluetooth 
if you go to a coffee shop, then Wi-Fi, because sometimes you may not have data in that country or the coffee shop doesn't have Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth will be a good first use case, uh, first transport to kind of rely on, because I think most, at, at least portable devices, have Bluetooth. You are mentioning uh, Bluetooth a lot, so it's, I think it, I agree with your points. Um, but I think if, are you planning to support Bluetooth beacons as well? Because, for instance, I can create my, my own on top of a uh, Wallet Connect, can create my app and uh, start a, a Bluetooth beacon. So this way I can, for instance, show my at least my address, my new address. So I think it would be uh, something cool for uh, your idea to use Bluetooth. Yeah, the, uh, the, it would, the thing we have to consider is that secure. there's this assumption within Wallet Connect that there's always someone listening to that communication. Even if it's not something very private, like having a transaction request, there's always like that attack vector where someone is snooping in and listening to all of your activity that's not even on-chain. While we assume that on-chain is public, like all of these interactions that we have, being broadcasted in the air or through the cloud, you kind of need that like resistance from being snooped in. So the QR code kind of provides that. Even with the scenario with Bluetooth, you have like this exchange of inform minimal information where you can encrypt data between two parties and have like a destination for the messages.